Hello there. Uh, as you know, it's Groundhog Day today, and um, Punxsutawney Phil and all the others, some of them will see their shadows, some of them won't. And uh, as we know, this also could lead to possibly six more weeks of winter. And uh, one thing that I learned this year uh, after undergoing knee surgery is that in the cold weather, boy, <laughs> your joints feel it. Um, so I figured it was a good opportunity to talk to everybody a little bit about um, joint health, not only in us, but in our pets as well, because they suffer a lot of the same uh, ailments that we do. I'm Dr. Brian Langwa. I'm the medical director here at the Humane League of Lancaster County, and I do want to preface this like I do all of my talks. Uh, you know, this is just general information. This is not designed to really diagnose or treat any of your own specific animals. You really do want to talk with your veterinarian about uh, taking care of those problems. So. What are the big things that we usually see in animals? Obviously arthritis in our older pets, um, as medicine has gotten better, animals have lived a lot longer, which is a great thing. Um, you know, our friends are with us for a much longer period of time. And as such, just like us, they can be prone to arthritis, specifically in their hips and their knees. Uh, those are the two big areas that usually animals will get it. Dogs, obviously, a lot more than cats. Cats are just naturally more limbo, limber, but they still can get it and suffer sometimes some back spasming and some, you know, muscle problems in their backs as a result of it. So, just like there are things out there for us, for our joints, glucosamine and chondroitin and all of these other things, those things exist for our pets as well. And it's very important that we consider putting them on it. Uh, what these things do, these glucosamines, the chondroitins, sharp cartilage, you know, tons of other things that they're discovering kind of on a daily basis, these help protect the joints. They help protect the cartilage that is still present in the joint and lubricate the joints better. All of this allows cartilage to not grind so much bone on bone and make things feel a lot better. So it's important that we keep going with those. Um, it will be a lifelong medication, uh, but the supplements are fairly inexpensive, and you can kind of shop around to try to find one that you think would work really well. Uh, another option out there uh, is something called non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. These are the equivalent of things like Advil and people and um, Aleve, things you see of those natures on commercials. However, I do want to say that it is very, very important never, and I mean never, give a human medication such as Advil, Tylenol, Aleve, any of those to your pet. Our livers are designed to break those um, substances down and be safe. Not so in dogs and cats. Um, you know, they can cause severe liver disease and, and a lot of times death in animals if you were to give those substances. So it's very, very important that you remember that. Um, with that being said, there are medications out there that are approved for pets, and you need to talk with your veterinarian. And just like Advil or Aleve might be used for us, it can be used kind of on an as-needed basis with our pets. We want to make sure, you know, that we don't overdo it, uh, but we do want to keep them comfortable because we can control their pain. If, as an animal is really getting up in ears, say with hip dysplasia or severe um, popping kneecaps or luxating patellas, things like that, there are other stronger pain medications that can be given, again, on an as-needed basis. Now, we focus on this in the winter mainly because we do know that it is a much, you know, bigger time of joint pain in ourselves. Believe me, I feel it in my knee now every day. Um, and I've been taking joint supplements um, ever since I had my knee surgery, and I have really noticed the difference. I also did go with non-steroidals as needed to kind of control the pain. But the other thing that some people forget about is um, just the overall environment of the animal. You want to make sure that the animal, maybe um, your pet has a heated bed um, or a lot of very soft, plushy uh, bedding. Some bedding manufacturers out there now actually make specific foam type pads that are designed to ease kind of the pains of arthritis and joint pain. Um, heat, you know, is important. You actually can use some heat packs on your animals on their joints if you consider it. Very light heat, kind of like you would use on yourself. It just helps limber things up and get them going in the morning because, as we all know, the morning is usually the worst part of this. Um, with the joint supplements, I do want to go back to them for a second and say, as I said, those were a lifelong medication. However, you as a, you know, as an owner, may not see a, a noticeable change in your pet for up to six weeks. It takes a while for these things to build up, and once you get a good dose going in the system, believe me, you will see a difference um, in your pet, and if you've taken them yourself, yourself as well. So those are all important things to remember. With the weather being very icy and cold as it is, at least where I am here, it's also important to remember that when your dog goes outside, um, if they're very prone to hip issues or knee issues, you want to make sure that they have a nice, um, sturdy surface that's, you know, as slip-free as possible. Um, a lot of dogs, you know, believe me, especially labs that are prone to hip dysplasia, they want to run and play in the snow, and you've got to kind of temper that a little bit, especially if they're going to be slipping and sliding, because that is going to hurt their joints a little bit. 
you try to do that as best you can. I understand with Labs and some of these other dogs, it's just not going to happen, but you want to try, like if you have an area out in your yard, something along those lines, you know, try to keep it maybe as ice-free or as snow-free as possible for an area for them to romp and play. So those are just some things to keep in mind when you're dealing with um, animals in this type of weather and animals as they get older with joint pain. Again, as I stated before, you want to make sure that you discuss with your veterinarian any plan that you may want to undertake. Most of the medications that I mentioned, some, like the joint supplements, are available over the counter at pet stores, uh, but some of the more um, stronger medications like non-steroidals and other pain medications can only be gotten by your veterinarian. And as I said, every case is different. You want to make sure that you discuss things thoroughly with your veterinarian before starting any kind of medication protocol with your animal. So I hope this has kind of been a little bit um, informative for you guys. If you have any questions, you can always call us here at the Humane League at 717-393-6551 at extension 241. That'll get me. I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. Uh, you can also email us at any time. Um, our email is on our website, which is humaneleague.com. And uh, again, um, hope you're having fun, enjoying this nice weather, looking forward to the summer. Get your pet out walking. Um, you know, definitely some light mobility is always good for joints as compared to just sitting around, so you want to do that. I'm about off to go take my uh, knee for a walk right now. So uh, be talking to you soon about the next fun medical topic.